don't need to call a plumber to install a reverse osmosis water purifier. Either you connect it to an existing faucet using a garden hose connector, or you add a T-piece to your existing cold water supply pipe. Whichever method you choose, just be sure to install it near a drainage point. Now, I'm installing an Ideal H2O 200 gallon per day reverse osmosis machine. Most brands follow the same drill. Now, this machine can produce all the water you need for an 8 or a 10 light grow, no problem. The coconut carbon block pre-filter on the left removes chlorine. The polyspun sediment pre-filter on the right removes particulates. And finally, the two reverse osmosis filters on the top remove any dissolved solids. The result? The purest water in town. Ideal for hydroponic growers who want to stay on top of their game. Now, you'll find that most of the connections have already been put in place for you. However, it's a good idea to give them all a once-over first, just on the off chance that any came loose during shipping. And after that, you've really only got three lengths of color-coded tubing to connect, white, blue, and black, and no prizes for guessing that you push the white tubing into the white socket. Ta-da! Yes, it's really that easy. The tubing is held in place once you push it in by the special socket. This thicker white tubing will bring the mains water supply into the RO machine. Next, we connect the blue tubing. This will carry the pure reverse osmosis water produced by the machine. This little white plastic box here is the membrane flush valve. I'll talk some more about this at the end, but for now, just notice that it's already connected to the black socket, so you should connect the black tubing to the valve's output. Next, mount the unit on your wall. Locate your RO machine away from the glare of your grow lights or you run the risk of algae issues inside your machine, which are no good. Now, feed the black waste pipe down your drain. Next, connect the other end of the white tubing to the mains water supply. Remember to switch it off first unless you enjoy getting wet. Now, as you can see, we've got a T-piece already in place so that we can supply water from my faucet and the RO machine at the same time. I prefer this method as 10 to 20% tap water mixed with your RO water really helps raise and stabilize the pH of your nutrient solution. Connect the pipe. A little PFTE or thread seal tape is sometimes handy. And before turning on the water supply, make sure the sediment and coconut carbon filters are screwed on tightly. Just use your hands for this. The supplied wrench is actually for unscrewing. And we're ready to roll. Turn on the water supply and watch the pre-filters fill with water. Check for any leaks, and if all seems okay, open up the flow valve at the end of the blue tube and let it run for about 30 to 40 minutes before collecting any water. Uh, hmm, just a dribble is coming out of the blue tube. I mean, you should see three times as much waste as purified water, but this looks like a lot more. A quick check of the water pressure and... Uh, uh, okay, that's the problem. Look, I mean, it's just 20 PSI. We need at least 40, max of 125. Now, this is a common problem, especially if your RO machine is installed on an upper floor or an attic. So the solution is an inline pressure booster pump. Now, these are sold separately. It comes with a power pack and a pressure switch. So bear in mind that if you go this route, you'll need an electrical socket nearby. Connect the power box to the pressure switch and the pressure switch to the pump. Remove the socket covers on the pump. Note that the arrows indicating the water flow direction. Input here, output here. Shut off the mains water supply. Cut the white main water supply pipe and connect the pump in line. And we're almost done, I promise. Now position the booster pump sympathetically, avoiding any kinks or sharp bends in the water supply pipe, of course. Finally, cut your blue tubing and attach it so that it flows through the pressure switch. It doesn't matter which way the water flows through the switch. Pressure is pressure. But attach a float valve at the end of the blue tubing so that when it cuts off, the resulting back pressure will cause the pressure switch to shut off the booster pump too. Turn the water supply back on, wait for the pre-filters to fill up again, and then turn on the pump. <laughs> Look at that. We're finally up to pressure. Woohoo! Now, run a new RO machine open like this for 30 to 40 minutes before collecting any water. Same goes for when you replace your pre-filters or RO membranes. Regular replacement of your pre-filters will significantly prolong the life of your RO membranes. Flushing the RO membranes every 1 to 2 months, again for 30 to 40 minutes, will really help to prolong the RO membranes too. Now you should simply pull up the white pin on the membrane flush valve and push it back down once you're done. If your source water is over 200 ppm, you may want to install a 
a pre-softener to convert some of those calcium and magnesium ions into sodium and potassium. This also extends the life of your RO membranes. Okay, so now I have near zero ppm water and that equals a very, very happy Everest. Don't forget to install a float valve to prevent floods if you're prone to being a bit, uh, what was I saying? Oh, and if you're wondering why reverse osmosis water is so good for hydroponics in the first place, check out my other video here that explains everything. Questions and comments below, as always, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. It's free and you know you want to. And sometimes your love, other than my lavender plants, is all that keeps me going. No, come on, it's good for my morale if you want to keep the videos flowing. Thanks for watching. Adios, amigos. This is Everest, out of the blue tube, of course, because I'm pure. Thank <laughs> you.